Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this moment of meditation and intercession. Our midweek prayer in the Chapel of Grace, University of Medugri, here in Nigeria. You're welcome. We want to share briefly from the Word of God, and then we shall pray based on what we share from the Word. We shall be sharing the topic, the church in the world, and we'll be praying for the church and her calling in the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this moment of meditation. We ask that your word will come alive into our hearts and into our lives, and that our prayer shall ascend unto you like evening sacrifice, and you will hear from heaven and intervene in the affairs of your church in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church in the world. What is the church? And what is the world? Uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, you know, we see these two aspects packaged together as short as you can find it in the scripture. Um, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 19, you will see the world described in its proper descriptive way that God has seized the world. And then you'll also see the church described the way God sees the church from verses 20 to 24. So shall we go there now? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Let us see how God describes the world and in fact it began with because God was addressing the church and he's telling the church that we should not walk in the way of the world and he describes the world why you shouldn't walk in the way of the world and then he would describe the church and how the church should walk in the way of the Lord so let's see what we should not do and because that is the world. Ephesians 4, 17. And it says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you no longer walk as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. In other words, all of us, there is nobody that has no part in the world. But there is, a, an injunction that you no longer walk in that way. No longer walk in that way. And that is very important. The world is the way that we no longer walk in. We should no longer, because for long we've been walking in it, but now we should no longer walk in the way of the world. That is what we must bear in mind as the church of God. We were long in the way of the world, but now we should no longer walk in the way of the world. That is what the church is. Those that no longer walk in the way they have for long walked in. Now, what is this way we should no longer walk in? And why shouldn't we say because of the vanity of the mind? The cultures of the world are a product of a mind of vanity, the fashion of the world, the dressing of the world, the likes and dislikes of the world, the choices and preferences of the world, the traditions, the trends and the tendencies of the world, the thoughts of the world, they are all a product of the vanity of the mind of man. Now, verse 18 goes for that to explain that vanity much more. You see, having their understanding darkened. The way of the world is a product of a darkened understanding. You see, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. The way of the world, the way of the nations, the civilizations of the Gentiles is a product of 
disconnection from God is a product of their ignorance of God. It is a product of darkness of understanding, a product of vanity of mind. All the razzmatazz and all the beautiful things we see and we rush after them. The patterns and trends that we set up, we admire them. The models, the celebrities and the celebrations. These things are not the way that the church and anyone that is a believer should any longer walk in. He says, because of the blindness of their heart, it's a product of blindness of heart, vanity of mind, darkness of understanding, ignorance and disconnection from God. Verse 18, verse 19 goes further. He says, who being past feeling, in other words, we have lost sensitivity. Even when we are wrong, we think we are right. That is the problem of the world. That is the disease of the world. The depravity of the world. You see, they have past feelings. And they have given themselves over to licentiousness. To work in all ungodliness and uncleanness. So, the reason why our culture... Our civilizations are licentious civilizations. Our cultures are unclean cultures, greedy cultures, godless cultures, wicked cultures. It's because of this vanity of mind, this blindness of heart, this darkness of understanding that is disconnected and ignorant of God, disconnected from God and ignorant of God, having not the life of God, and have lacking divine sensitivity to sound and know what is good and what is right. Our moral meter has been destroyed and been distorted. The amateur is not working well anymore. And so we cannot detect what is right. That's why when we are told anything about godliness, we revolt and we revile. May the Lord have mercy upon us. But he said in verse 20, but you have not learned this from Christ. That's why you should no longer walk in these vile ways. Because that's not what you've learned from Christ. And we pray that that will be the portion of everyone watching and everyone participating in this program at this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, you have not learned these things. That's not what Jesus has taught us. If it is true, that you have had Jesus. If it is true, you have been taught by Jesus. If it is true that you have learned the truth that is in Christ Jesus. When you have the truth that is in Christ Jesus, the trained traditions and tendencies of the world will vanish. You will no longer agree to work with them. You will oppose them. You will challenge them. You will correct them. You will rebuke them. You will reprove them. You will not conform to them because you'll be transformed from them. And until you are fully transformed, you'll never rest. And you see anyone that's not transformed, you will not allow the person to rest. The person may tell you, judge me not. You are not judging the person. You are helping. You are helping somebody and the person is saying you are judging. You are showing love to the person. And the person is revolting violently. He said, condemning, you are not condemning, you are correcting the person. You want the person to take the correction you have taken and or join you in the one you are trying to take. You are not. Don't mind the world. It is because of darkness of their heart. That's why they think that correction is condemnation. It's because of the blindness of their heart. Because they lack understanding of the things of God. And you don't ever allow anybody to make you give up by those things. Don't even bother about it. The person needs help. He needs your perseverance, your persistence. And as you continue both to preach for the, to the person and to pray for that person. You see, that person will eventually one day come to it and he will say, Well, you know those days I was so horrible to you guys, but I now know better. So don't get discouraged. Don't, don't even get perturbed. Don't even be slowed down by those things. You now understand why people 
behave that way. It's vanity of mind, blindness of heart, darkness of understanding, disconnection from God, ignorance from God. That's why they see things the wrong way. You say, ah, you are being holier than thou attitude. Whereas you want to make that person holier. You want the person to be holier even than yourself. And they say you are trying to be holier than him or trying to be holier than her. No. You want the person to be holier than he is or she is and even holier than you are. That's what you want. That's why you are pricking the person's conscience. That's why you are bringing conviction. That's why you are bringing correction. That's why you want conviction and, co and conversion to take place. That's it. But the person will, will reinterpret it and turn it the other way around because of the darkness of understanding, because of the blindness of the heart, and because of the vanity of the mind. The person is in bondage, is in a stranglehold by the enemy, and you must persevere until that person is set free. Even you yourself, you, if you have passed through this, you will know that you were doing like that. But now you have learned from Christ and you know the truth and you have rejected the trend. You've rejected the thoughts of the, of the world. Verse 22 says that you put off concerning the former ways of life, the old man. The church are not people who never had the old man. They are people who had it for long, but they have now decided to put it off. And they are making sure that everybody goes through the same decision of putting it off. That is what the church is sent into the world for. That's why there is still church in the world. He said that your old man was, is, is a corrupt man that is according to the deceitful lusts. Many people, you know, when you have lust, lust deceives you. It makes you not to think straight. You think that you are enjoying when you are actually destroying you know, that is the problem of lust. Verse 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You need to be renewed from dark understanding. You need to be renewed from blind mind. You need to be renewed from vain heart. You need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that is what Jesus brings to us. And we pray that the church will be this church. That we look at this world that we read now. And tell the world where you are is not good. It's not worthy of copying. But unfortunately, the world, the church is copying the world. The world is telling the church how to preach to it. How can somebody who doesn't even understand, who is deceived by his lust and her lust, how can he know how he should be brought up? If you knew how to be preached to, then you don't need to preach to the person. The person should preach to himself and herself and take the correction. He said, no, no, you, you don't have to talk to me that way. If you want to talk to me, then you have to talk it this way. If you know how I should talk to you, then I don't need to talk to you. But that is what is going on. And the church is trying to learn how to address the world from the world. You cannot learn how to address the world from the world. You can only learn how to talk to the world from the Lord of the world. Only the Lord. And when you talk, you talk in the name of that Lord. You are not begging the church. You are warning. You are not begging the world. You are warning the world. And if they don't take it, they will be destroyed. It's when somebody is trying to fall into fire, he's telling you, no, if you won't hold me and beg me, I will not come out of fire. You know the guy is in trouble. Person that is being burned by fire does not know how to come out of the fire. If he knew, he wouldn't be there. And that is the problem. And you, we can't take instruction from the world. Instruction must come from the Lord of the world. And we should pray that the church will recover from that. Since the church began to learn from the world how to talk to the world, the world has taken over the church. And the church has not made any impact in the world any longer. Before, the world was coming to light through the light of the church. Now, everything is darkness. There's no more light. In fact, the world is now claiming that they are the ones that have the light. You now see people who say they are the light bringers. They are the illuminators. 
They are the elites. They are the Luciferans. They are the ones bringing the light. Because the church has quenched its light and is trying to use its candle to light from the light of the world. How can you light from darkness? It is light that when it shines, that will give you the vision of everything. Something is white. It's only white if light is shining. If light is not shining, it's black. If it has no color because you don't see it. Something that is green is green because the light is shining. In fact, if the light is green, everything will be looking green. If you shine red light, everything will look red. But if you shine white light, then things will take up their proper color. The same way the church is the salt. Salt is a preservative. Without salt being soaked into meat or fish, fresh feet or fresh meat, it will rotten immediately. If you want it to retain some time, some freshness, you need to salt it with salt. Salt is what gives anything taste. And that's why Jesus said we are the light and we are the salt of the world. We pray that we will not see the church going down any longer. But the church coming back to realize why it was sent into the world. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church. Let us pray, let us pray that the Lord God will intervene in the decadence, in the derailing, in the despondency, in the deception that have overtaken the church. They have overtaken the world and overtaken the church. Let's pray for the church of our time. They now talk about post-evangelicalism, post Christian, Christianity, post-modernism, all kinds of things, post, post. They now see themselves as progressive, whereas the Bible sees them as retrogressive and depraved. They, they don't understand that they have lost the way. Let's pray that God will open the eyes of the church so that the church will make known to the world their true position. Let's pray that the church will no longer be overcome by the world, but that the church will overcome the world. Pray for you that the Lord will so teach you his way, rescue you from the stronghold of all kinds of thoughts and the imaginations of the heart that are against the knowledge of God, that God will rescue you and that these strongholds will be torn down, be pulled down, and you'll be set free to know that we have come to the world not to copy the world, not to mingle with the world, but to win souls, not to mingle souls. We are mingling souls. Pray that God will save the church and help the church from the wrong assignment of mingling souls to the right assignment of winning souls. Pray that God will help you and help his church. Pray that the, the church will awaken, that God has called them to overthrow the vanity of the world by bringing down the verity of the Lord. That all the, the, the uselessness in the world will be overcome by the truth of the word of God. And that the church will not relent the church will not slow down. The church will not blink an eye. The church will not be careful about anything except this. St. Paul said, this is one thing I do. I consider everything as done. Nothing is important except this one thing. And nobody should ever bother to be ashamed of it or to have any regard. St. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, it may be foolishness to the Greeks, it may be offensive to the Jews, but I don't give a damn. I have an assignment I don't want to have any other, and that is to make the truth of the cross of Christ to be known. Let's pray that the church will awaken to make the truth of Christ's cross known in the world of our time. Let's pray that 
God will help the church to upturn the carnal vileness of, this na of the nations of this generation. And the church will bring to bear the spiritual virtue and the spiritual vibrancy that has come from heaven upon those that receive the grace of God. God freely gives these things, but the world violently, rebelliously rejects them. They give conditions under which they will take them without knowing that they are a perishing world. And they cannot give God conditions. They should come with conviction, with conversion, with contrition, with compunction, not giving God condition. Let's pray that God will show mercy upon the church and mercy upon the world of our generation. That the eyes of our understanding shall be opened and this darkness shall go. Let's pray that the church will awaken to occupy. The Bible says we have to occupy. We have to get busy. We have to take over. We have to labor until the world becomes what the Lord wants it to be. Let's pray that the church will take up this challenge afresh, even at this hour, and that the church will remain unspotted the Bible says, as we rescue, we must not allow ourselves to be spotted, but remain unspotted by the world. Let us pray also that the church will awaken to learn the ways of the Lord and show the ways of the Lord to the world. And not to learn the ways of the world and copy them unto the Lord. The church is learning the ways of the world and they are copying them to the Lord. Instead of learning the ways of the, of the Lord and showing them to the world. Let's pray that the church will awaken even at this season. Let us also pray that God will help us. That we no longer seek to measure up to the expectation of the church. But we will seek to measure up to the expectation of the Lord. Measuring up to the expectation of the, of the church is friendship of the world, is friendship with the world. And the Bible says when you take up to be on course with the friendship with the world, then you, are you have chosen to be in enmity against God. Let's pray that we will seek to measure up to the Lord's standard and not to the world's standard. Let us pray that we will seek to please the Lord and not to please the world. Pray that your Christianity will be a Christianity that never seeks to please the world, but ever seeks to please the Lord. You can't please the Lord and please the world because you cannot serve two masters. You must make up your mind which master to serve. You, if you seek to please the Lord, the world will never be pleased with you. If you think you can serve two masters, you think you can please both the world and the Lord, then you are saying that God is a liar. You cannot serve two masters. Let's pray that the church will awaken. Enough of double dealing. Enough of trying to please people who do not care about pleasing God. Enough of that. That the church will awaken and say, it is only the Lord we shall please. St. Paul says, let the whole world be liars. Let only God be true. I stand with God and I am not mindful nor careful about any other thing. Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, live forever. But listen, we will not go the way you want us to go. We will go with the Lord. Even if the Lord will not deliver us, we will go with the Lord. The apostles said to the Sanhedrin, Georgie, whether we should do the thing the way you want us to do it, or we should do it the way the Lord wants us to do it, we want you to judge that one. Pray that the church will awaken and stand for the Lord 
and rescue the world out of destruction. Our generation needs such a church. That we have a renegade church, a despondent church, a derailed church, discouraged church, a complaining church, not a conquering church. Let's pray that God will help us. Father, help your church in the world, especially in this generation. And grant, O oh God, that we shall be what you want us to be, O oh God. That our generation shall not perish in their stubbornness. They will not perish in their rebelliousness. They will not perish in the darkness of their understanding. They will not perish. Oh God, we shall resist and we stand in your name until they be rescued. Lord, we will not seek to please them, but seek to rescue them. Father, we pray that you will help us do this. And we shall walk as soldiers of the cross, as priests as princes, not as beggars, but as priests and princes that have a message from a king to a people that need deliverance. Father, we pray that you will send us and we will go forth in this power and every obstacle shall crumble and those that you shall save shall be saved. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. When you've prayed every prayer that you know how to pray Just remember the Lord will hear And the answer is on its way Our God is able He is mighty He is faithful And He